<laughs> okay, okay. You guys are probably wondering, what is he up to now? <laughs> well, first of all, welcome aboard. And uh, I hope everybody's doing well. And um, I'm going to get to your curiosity here just momentarily. Um, it's a foregone conclusion that there's a lot of videos out there from people shooting muzzle loaders, trying different, you know, conicals versus round ball, um, Thompson maxi ball, the Lee uh, rifling engaged at loading, um, the um, Buffalo bullet. Yes, and there's a wide variety of bullets out there that one can shoot through a muzzle loader, but not all muzzle loaders are the same. You know, for instance, like when you're shooting a Thompson Maxi ball out of a long gun with a 1 in 72 twist, you can't expect any accuracy out of that as you would with a round ball. And when you have a Thompson 50 caliber, Hawking gun, Hawking style gun with a 1 in 48 twist, they can handle the Thompson Maxi ball just fine along with a round ball. Now, my experience, not my opinion, my experience taught me that I had to adjust my sights a little bit on my Thompson 50 caliber when I started shooting the Maxi ball because they tend to shoot a little higher. But that's not the purpose of this video because most of you already know that. What I'm speaking now is just for the benefit of those that don't have a whole lot of experience, um, you know, with muzzle loaders and these type of things. Now, when I had my Thompson 50 caliber Hawking gun, I shot the maxi ball. But what I did is I took an eighth inch drill bit, and you know, if you look at the top of that maxi ball, let me see if I can get you a better view here instead of my ugly mug, it's got a little flat spot on top. And that's how these maxi balls are designed. And these are, you know, rifle, um, grease grooves right here, okay? But what I used to do is take an eighth inch drill bit and dimple, this is a little bit bigger, I just happened to grab something that I thought was close, and I would take and dimple it. Not very deep, but just the width of that flat spot. And try to get it even. Probably should be doing this with my reading glasses on. <laughs> but I think you get the point. Um, and there again, this is just to demonstrate. You can see, uh, hopefully, you can see the dimple that I made on the top of that flat uh, spot on the Thompson Maxi Ball. Now, this is 54, 54 caliber, okay? And I'll get to this in just a moment. Um, the reason I did this with my 50 caliber Thompson is that I soon discovered through experimentation not reading what someone else had done I decided to do this myself because I wanted to see how much more expansion I could get out of this bullet by doing that and um, I don't shoot into ballistic gel I've never shot into ballistic gel so as I describe what I did for you guys that are thinking right now, well, you did it wrong because you shot into dirt instead of ballistic gel, you're more than welcome to pour yourself some ballistic gel and take this test yourself. But what I did is I shot into a dirt embankment. Now, let me explain what I did. I went and I got a whole bunch of of dirt and I sifted out all the rocks so that all I shot into was pretty much soft dirt. And I did that so that I could recover that bullet and see how much greater the expansion would be. Now this is 54 caliber but imagine this being 50 caliber. And one of the maximum bullets that I ever got recovered 
was about 15 sixteenths of an inch across its widest point. And I went into the soft sand so that there would be little to no damage from any rocks or debris into this sand embankment, okay? Now, I will tell you, when I lived in Wisconsin, I killed one deer, one buck that was coming at me head on. And I shot him between the eyes and that bullet traveled through the, uh, through the uh, spinal cord, okay? Or just alongside it. it. The point that I'm getting at with this is that I recovered that bullet out of that deer. And that bullet had expanded to a little greater than three quarters of an inch. And that's going through flesh, okay? Take it for what it's worth. I'm just expressing to you friends my experience in doing what I just showed here. I was wanting to see what what type of greater expansion I could get because we all recognize that a that a, um, a hollow point and even the buffalo bullet expands quite a bit beyond you know what what the circumference of the bullet is coming out of the bullet mold. Okay. So anyhow um, progress through time. I have my Lyman Great Plains. Now the Lyman Great Plains has a 1 in 66 twist and according to all of the um, all of the numbers out there the 1 in 66 twist is not the greatest for something like a Thompson Maxi Ball or any type of conical. And on the surface I would agree with that. Okay. But being a trader, over the course of the years, I've bought in boxes of bullet molds. And one by one, here and there, I sell those bullet molds off. And in one of those boxes of bullet molds was a Thompson 54 caliber bullet mold. Now, since I have the Thompson, uh, the um, Lyman Great Plains 54 caliber, I decided to pour up a few of these a long time ago. And experiment with them by dimpling the top of the bullet. I've never done that. <laughs> I've never done that. And you guys can probably see just by the oxidation how long ago I actually poured these bullets. It's been a while. And my, my main purpose obviously was to take this particular bullet bear hunting. Now this bullet, I... I'm trying to um, check what Tom, uh, yeah, Thompson is saying that the weight of the bullet is supposed to be coming out of this mold. But I really don't need that because I can just get my scale. And I've got, um, I've, I've got some bullets here. I found this pretty interesting. Um, I've got some bullets here. And um, five of them weighed 411 grains. Two, four, six, seven of them weighed 413 grains. Three of them weighed uh, 407.5, uh, excuse me, four of them weighed, because I cut one in half. Four of them weighed 407.5 grains, and four of them weighed 410 grains. Now I do pour my bullets with a very high temperature, and I've mentioned this before on this channel. Usually, the, the scummy dross on top of my lead before I pour it is either that blue to golden color. That's when I pour my lead. Because when you pour hot lead into a cold mold, you tend to get air pockets, you tend to get wrinkles until the mold heats up, and or vice versa, if you're pouring cold lead, um, colder lead, uh, you tend to get air pockets. Now because these bullets had such a variation of weights, I thought I would cut one in half and see um, if there was an air pocket because the difference between the 413 and the 407.5 is obviously six and a half grains. That appears to be a lot and in my book that would be a lot. So here's that bullet cut in half and there are no air pockets in it at least this ways so what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to pause the camera and I'm going to try to cut these in half once again so that I would have four pieces and see if there's any air pockets in this. And if there is, then that would tell me, you know, the reason why there's such a variation in weight with these uh, four bullets. So hold on and I'll get right, right back at you. Well, that didn't take long, did it? <laughs> at least from your perspective. Okay. Here's that one half of the bullet quartered up. Do you see any air gaps in there? Any pockets? I don't. Here's the other half quartered up. Do you see any air pockets? And if you're thinking that what's right here on the bottom is an air pocket, that's from the hacksaw. That's not an air pocket. Look at that real close. Now, just so that we can have a visual aid, let me turn the camera around for you. Okay. I took a bullet and I put a lot of hacksaw marks in this bullet so that I could recover what is 6.5 grains of lead. I'm going to pour that onto a paper plate so you can appreciate just how much lead it is and then ask yourself how much you know how much of a void would that little bit of lead fill. So that's 6.5 grains of lead. Now I do have a close-up on it so I'm going to back out of it. So there's that same pile. I'm going to kind of walk in on it just a little bit with my hand so you can get a good look at it. But there's that same pile of lead, 6.5 grains, on this paper plate. So the question that you need to ask is how much space would that really occupy if you had an air pocket in your bullet? Obviously this is not liquefied liquefied it would be a lot smaller but just how much smaller I'm not going to take the time to answer that the point being is that I cut that bullet that weighed the lightest and there's zero evidence of an air pocket that would contain that amount of lead it's just not there which goes to prove my point what I've said before on this channel even though you might have a bullet mold that's a certain size is supposed to cast a certain grain weight bullet it's not always going to happen so for those guys that like to do match shooting and bench shooting their guns all the time yeah you can go ahead and take the time to you know weigh out all your bullets and get rid of all the bullets that you know they're not matched weight but still that doesn't guarantee that the gun or the guy pulling the trigger is any better than anybody else shooting a different weight bullet of the same size and caliber. That doesn't prove that at all. So here's some random sampling of what is Hornaday 54 caliber round ball .530. Out of the sampling I got two that weighed 223 grains. I got four that weighed 226 grains. I got uh, six that weighed 225 grains, but the vast majority weighed 224 grains. So based on weight and cavities in your round ball, if you bought a brand new package of Hornaday 54 caliber round ball, you would have to probably shit can all the 224s because they weigh less than the 226s. Are you going to do that? I wouldn't. I'd shoot them anyways. Especially coming out of a barrel that has like a 1 in 66 twist or a 1 in 72 twist. The whole mechanics of this is, is yes, I've seen some round balls with pocket um, air pockets in them and they can throw the spin off. But how much does it really throw off when you're only 
making one complete revolution in 72 inches. Is it really going to be that much? Enough to really worry about, but again, the point being is that if you bought a brand new box of Hornaday 54 caliber, and based on the whole concept of, you know, weight and, and um, uh, air pockets, you'd have to shit can all these 224s because they are lighter by two grains of the 226. All right. I'm going to wrap this up and I'll get out to the um, shooting range and we'll see how much um, these 54 caliber Thompson Maxi Balls, we'll see what they do through my Lyman Great Plains. Eighty grains, two F of elephant, and I think we can see. Despite what I thought, it's shooting high. It shot a little low, right. I do have sifted dirt in that box. So I should be able to recover these. Let me get loaded up and take another shot. As you guys can tell, it's a bit breezy. So if there's no sound, it's me disconnecting the sound. I am also using uh, TC bore butter to lubricate these bullets. Let me go mark those off. Can't see it from here. It's a lot of sun reflecting in my uh, view screen. I'll go mark it off anyways. Hopefully you guys can see it. That third shot went just a little below the second shot. Um, I was only able to recover two of the three bullets. Um, nothing penetrated the entire depth of the box. I'll show you the bullets um, when I get everything finished and back into the shop. But this next bullet I'm shooting is going to be one of the ones that I dimpled and at this point I'm not sure what's going to happen because I've got one bullet in there that I know is a bullet that I did not dimple. Maybe I'll shoot a few more of these and um, we'll be able to call out the one that um, I couldn't recover. Alright here we go 80 grains once again. I see where that one went. A little high, but she's right in the bullseye. Any guesses where that went? I saw the sand pouring out. Just to let you know, in the previous walk up, I think I did find that third bullet that I shot in the first round. Uh, let me go mark this off. I got one more to shoot. Um, I'm going to flip the camera over, zoom in on it. You're going to see that it's low left. I did that on purpose because I wanted to make sure for a fact um, that I can recover one of them bullets. And there it is. So I'm going to go uh, empty out the sand in the box, gather the bullets, and I'll meet you in the shop. So, give you guys another little close-up of the box. Like I said, that low left one I, I put that one there on purpose just so that I could guarantee recovering at least one of the bullets. I did manage to get um, three. Um, this one right here that went a little high, yeah, I think you'll recognize it was a huge puff of dirt at that point and I kind of think that ball went up and out of the box because I couldn't find it in the box. Um, but it's interesting, um, I got three of the ones that I dimpled the top. I already knocked one of them off. These have already come loose, but all three of those bullets had a little bit of a dirt cone stuck to them. Let me see if I can give you a little better view. That was a dirt cone that formed behind the bullet. And that's the one that I dimpled. None of the ones that I found, like uh, this, that I did not dimple, 
didn't have the dirt cone. I found that interesting. And there's the other one with the dirt cone. But ultimately, that group, 2F Elephant. Now, I didn't chronograph it, obviously, because when you're going deer hunting, what do you care more about? That or how many feet per second you're getting out of elephant? At that point, it doesn't matter. That's why I keep saying I think in different terms. Now, for 2F, elephant, with a bullet that I'm not really accustomed to shooting, and a much, much heavier bullet, I would dare say that's pretty good. Okay. The first three bullets shaped just like that. I got a good expansion on it. I'm going to lay it on the ruler here and I'm going to get the camera so that you can see for yourself what it measures. Give you as best close up as I can of all three. And, I'm, I, and I am measuring them at their widest points. Okay. I don't know if that's really what you guys want. Maybe I'll end up doing both. But here's these three bullets at their widest point. So you can see that it is under one inch. I'd, I'd probably say it's pretty close to 15 sixteenths. Again, these were the ones that I did not dimple. Um, here again, looking at the widest point, you're probably just about at 7 eighths. Or I should say the shortest point, not the widest, but you're about at 7 eighths. We'll throw another one on there. And let's see here. Yeah, you're right at about 7 eighths that way. Probably a hair over 7 eighths, maybe a little under 15 sixteenths. This one here would say is a really good 15 sixteenths that way. And obviously about 7 eighths that way. So now let me get uh, three bullets that I put the dimple on the top of that flat spot. Okay, now for the bullets that I dimpled. There's the widest point. I'd say that's a little over 15 sixteenths. There's a wide spot right at about one inch. There's another wide spot about right at one inch. Here's another one. Oops. Um, I'd say it's a little over 15 sixteenths, but let's just call it 15 sixteenths just to be fair. I'd say that was 15 sixteenths solid. If I quit moving the camera, I'd say that's a little over 15 sixteenths. But you guys decide for yourself. That's why I'm showing you this. But this isn't the end of it. I got something else I want to show. Okay. There's the widest point. You're right at one inch. Turn it around a little bit. And we're under 15 sixteenths. Go a little bit more. And we're still under uh, 15 sixteenths. Not by much. I don't have it all the way to the edge. But there it is. 15 sixteenths. Now you guys decide for yourself whether this is worth doing it or not. But before you make that judgment, let me show you something else. Okay, the bullets on the left would be which bullets? And the bullets on the right would be which bullets? You can clearly see, or at least I hope you can, that the bullets that I dimpled mushroomed over a whole lot more than the bullets that I did not dimple. I think you guys can clearly see that difference. Interesting, 
isn't it? So, what do you guys think? Little something different, isn't it? You can get a little bit more expansion with the maxi balls if you dimple the top. And as I just showed the close up, you get more of a mushroom type curl on the underside of it when you dimple them. Now, the very fact that I was able to recapture two that had the cone, the dirt cone still stuck to it, should indicate. At least it does to me. You make up your own mind. But it indicates to me that that bullet seems to be hitting a little bit harder um, when you dimple the top of that um, maxi ball. Because I did not find any, any cones or anything on the top of the bullets that I did not dimple. Just an interesting observation. So anyhow, friends, thanks for watching. I hope you'll take a moment or two to give it a thumbs up and to share it with your bestest of buds because i'll just about bet no one has ever thought about dimpling the top of those maxi ball bullets thanks for watching and everybody have a great week <clears throat> bye